entitled Bridezilla Destroys Her Own Wedding, then demands me and the bridesmaids to pay for her wedding. Now, the meat of the story comes on the wedding day. The day started off horribly. Dana was having a meltdown because, apparently, the flower girl had to cancel because she had chicken pox. She was threatening to sue the mother unless she brought this sick three-year-old to the wedding. Josh apparently was able to calm her down from this starter outburst, and we began to prepare. The whole day, she had constant outbursts. She made people cry. Like wedding staff and bridesmaids, the maid of honor deserves a medal for the amount of diplomacy and damage control she had to do. I, for the most part, took the easy route and decided to work outside the bridal suite, like checking flowers and making sure the food was okay. Basically, any excuse not to be around the bride. Eventually, I had my makeup and hair done. Then the bride asked for a little bit of time alone to decompress from the stress. We didn't even fight it. You could not see a group of women run faster away. Wedding was starting in 30 minutes, so we figured she would be fine alone for that little. I spent those 30 minutes just sitting in the chapel with my phone. It had to be about five minutes before the start of the wedding when Maid of Honor came over to tell me the wedding was canceled. I asked her what happened. The Maid of Honor said, Dana was having a quickie with Josh's uncle in the room. Josh caught them. I just stared at the maid of honor with my mouth pretty much about to reach the floor. She told me to run and that she was trying to get as many people out before things exploded. One thing to note, she had her makeup and hair done, and we left dressed and ready. So yeah, she was wearing her wedding dress for this. So I quickly got my purse, gathered the two bridesmaids that were carpooling with me, and we left like the devil was after us. I checked with the other bridesmaid and all had escaped. That night, I called the maid of honor to check what happened, and the tea was bad. Apparently and rightfully, Josh called off the wedding, called her a few names, told off his uncle, and has since left with his mates to I hope have the biggest single man party ever. I feel so bad for him. He's an absolute gem of a man. He apparently also told Dana and her parents that she will be paying the cancellation fees. According to the maid of honor, Dana's father told her in front of everyone that she was paying it on her own for being a whore. I thought that was the end of it. I made the choice to separate myself from this mess. Until I got a call from Dana, not even an hour ago, demanding $5,000 to help pay her cancellation fees. According to Dana, it was our duty as the bridal party to pay her cancellation fees. I obviously told her no and that she might as well lose my number. I am never speaking to this woman again. This has been pretty much the reaction of all bridesmaids and the maid of honor. By the way, who is the maid of honor? It's Josh's older sister. I spoke to Josh a few days after. He told me that he's okay and has worked on pulling himself together, figuring things out, and moving on. We're going to stay friends with him and his sister. Dana was told that no one in the group wants to interact with her, and since then it's been mostly radio silence. I can't share more about Josh's future plans, as he asked me not to. Also, Josh clarified the whole ordeal between Dana and his uncle. Apparently, he's the younger brother of Josh's mother, and he's 55 years old. I thought he was married into the family, but I got that detail wrong. I also found out the most disgusting detail is the uncle knew Dana since she was a teenager. Dana and Josh are high school sweethearts. So... Yeah, I kind of feel gross knowing that. I also heard that uncle's wife is planning a divorce. Three months go by, and Josh is doing much better. He's moved out to a new place away from Dana and has some of his friends as roommates. He also cut contact with his uncle, as did most of his family. He's put a pause on dating for some time, considering Dana was his first and only girlfriend for years, so he needs time to heal. Dana has now become persona non grata, or an unacceptable, unwelcome person with my friends. She even tried to move in with one of them without telling her by appearing at 10 p.m. at night and screaming, you can't send me away this late at night. Didn't work. Don't know where she's living, but I can say for sure she's absolutely without any doubt, very much screwed. She has four lawsuits, one from Josh for obvious reasons, one from his sister for the dresses she bought, one from the bridesmaid she accused of being pregnant, and one from Josh's uncle, since apparently Dana used his credit card. She apparently moved with him after the failed wedding. Also, I heard more about what happened at the time Dana accused one of her bridesmaids who was religious of being pregnant in front of her parents. Apparently, bridesmaid had been feeling sick a few days prior, and I remember she had canceled something. Then we went to prepare the bachelorette party, and there was going to be an extra charge for mocktails, which she offered to pay. Dana found out somehow and spoke first to her parents, telling them that bridesmaid was acting like she was pregnant, not mentioning that the whole issue was because bridesmaid refused to make an exception for the bachelorette party about drinking. Obviously still kind of bad on the parents, but I can see where they are coming from. Bridesmaid is not pregnant for the record. She was actually just sick. Also, in case someone asks, Bridesmaid no longer lives with her parents and hasn't for a few years. Bridesmaid was then contacted by her parents and told to never come back to their home for being a whore that got pregnant outside marriage. So yeah, she threw away her life and she's very much without support. I saw Dana's parents some days ago and they haven't had any contact with her since the wedding. They are actually moving with their other daughter who is 22 to another state. As for Josh's sister, we've been hanging out for a while. 
she actually becomes super tight with my friends and I. We're even planning a trip sometime next year with her and her seven-year-old child to Disney. And yes, we've all agree to divide the babysitting. We offered. She didn't press us to do so. My ex-wife is having a funeral for our daughter's assaulter. Warning. Sexual abuse. Rope resulting in pregnancy of a minor, child abuse, and neglect. I'm angry I wasn't in time to off my kid's stepdad. I have a bad custody agreement with my ex. I broke the law a few years ago and was given five years of probation. During this duration, our custody agreement gives me alternative weekends with my two daughters, 14 and 10. Almost two years ago, my oldest stopped coming for her weekend visits. I tried to force the issue, but allowed her the concession, as I thought it was a phase that would pass. Flash forward to this past Wednesday, when I confirmed that I'd be picking up my 10-year-old at least. My ex confirmed, and just casually dropped the knowledge that her husband had died. I sent my condolences and told her if there was anything she needed to let me know. So you can imagine my shock when my 10-year-old proceeded to explain the circumstances that led to her stepfather's death. It's as bad as you can imagine. My 14-year-old apparently told her 8th grade boyfriend about the sexual abuse that had been going on from her stepfather. God bless the young man for telling his parents, who in turn called the police. After being questioned by the police, my daughter told them everything, and they went to arrest the stepfather. He then took his own life rather than face the authorities. I knew none of these events until it was relayed to me by my 11-year-old. I'm so angry that my ex did not let me know what was happening. But I'm more angry that the piece of trash killed himself before I got the chance to do it to him. I don't know what to do now. I'm a very good father to my 10-year-old, and now I feel like my older daughter has been manipulated into seeing me as evil the last couple of years. I just have so much anger right now. The day of the funeral has rolled around. I'm beyond pissed off today. My ex-wife is having a funeral for her husband, a man who sexually assaulted my daughter all of 2022 after having groomed her for the last two years. The guy was guilty. My daughter, this 14, finally found the strength to confide in a friend who called the cops. CPS and the sheriff's department both did forensic interviews and believed her to be credible. Prior to arrest, the guy killed himself rather than face judgment. I'm glad he's dead, but I wanted to see his face on the news and in court. So to skip over a lot of the aftermath, my ex-wife, who, as a Stepford wife, cares more about appearances and make it seem that everything is cookie-cutter and normal is going through with a funeral for the piece of garbage. She refuses to acknowledge that anything is wrong and has legitimately told me that I'm making it more than it was. Every part of me wants to show up at the funeral yell in front of all his clueless friends and family about how he was a child ropist and kick over the casket. I even looked for groups that could protest outside the thing. I'm just so lost and angry. I talked myself out of showing up, so my ex-wife did end up having the funeral for her husband. My girls were in attendance as their mother demanded, even though it had been explained to me that they would have the option of attending. Despite my every desire to appear and ruin everything, I chose not to. I did, however, alert several advocacy groups, and they, in turn, blew up the funeral home's website obituaries to the point that they stopped allowing posts for the assaulter. In the months since, however, I have fortunately had some positive happenings in my life. Despite what was seemingly overwhelming evidence, my attempt at emergency custody was denied by the family court. It's a shame that there are still so many judges that are very anti-father. Even with this setback, however, my oldest daughter has returned to my life. I've gotten to spend time with her every other weekend since at her choice. She has shared her last three years with me, and it has been heartbreaking. On top of the sexual abuse, there was a pregnancy that was terminated, two suicide attempts and hospitalizations, and a police investigation of the circulation of her photos amongst collectors. All of these circumstances were hidden from me and not disclosed or acknowledged by my ex. Despite all of this, the judge still supports keeping the girls in her custody. My daughters are both getting therapy and counseling, the oldest because of the events and the younger due to her neglect, although my ex swears that she's fine and doesn't really need it. But she is delusional. Things have a way of getting back at you as my ex is being sued by her late husband's children and former employer over theft and forgery. I have decided and will maintain the stance that I don't care what my ex is doing in her personal life, but will only get involved when it directly concerns the well-being of my daughters. So in that regard, it has been a struggle. Yet I'm rebuilding a fragile relationship, and we've actually bonded over shared trauma. I have a small suspicion and self-doubt right now about her, but I'm going to try and remain hopeful. Thanks for listening.